Good morning, everybody. Tuesday morning. Another lovely day. What a spring we're having. Um, and we're in the resurrection season, thinking about what happened after Jesus rose from the dead. And today I'm thinking about Thomas. Thomas. Uh, perhaps along with the denial at uh, on Good Friday, uh, the most famous story of a disciple's mistake um, that has so much to say to us. But I was thinking about Thomas. I was thinking, what, what do we know about Thomas? We don't know very much about him, actually, except that he was nicknamed the twin, or Didymus, which just means the twin. Now, we don't know who his twin was. I mean, we know that James and John were brothers and the sons of Zebedee and different people were named in association with uh, members of their family, but Thomas, we just know he is Thomas the twin. Um, and but, he, the, but there are two occasions when he appears before the <clears throat> story we're going to talk about today. One is, if I wonder if we'd have had the wonderful saying of Jesus, uh, I am the way, the truth and the life, um, if Thomas hadn't said to him in John 14, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Thank you, Thomas, for asking that question, because that question from Thomas led to the statement by Jesus, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. What a wonderful, clear statement by Jesus of the truth, of the only certain way to salvation is Jesus. The only real truth in this world is Jesus. And the only true life is through Jesus. I could stop there. That would be wonderful. What a wonderful thought for the day. Um, but then we come um, to the second time that Thomas is, is mentioned. And that is, uh, oh, no, I, I, I jumped the first one. Actually, the first one is uh, at the raising of Lazarus. When Lazarus was ill and Jesus stayed away, as in John 11, he stayed away for four days. When he finally decided to go um, near to Jerusalem, where all the all the um, enemies of Jesus, the opponents of Jesus, were were centered, um, and he decides to go, and they realize that it, they're going to to a dangerous situation. It is Thomas in verse sixteen of chapter eleven who says, "Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him.'" So he he was willing. He he knew that they were in a difficult situation. And here we are after the resurrection. The day has happened. And on that evening of that first day of the week, when all the, when the women had come and told them, and it was only the women that met with Jesus, not the disciples in, on the, in the morning. It was the women. The, the men went and saw the empty tomb. But, um, and we're not sure exactly when Peter met with Jesus, but it would have been during that day, I think. But all the disciples were together in the room and uh, and when Jesus first appears to them all on that evening of that first day, except Thomas. It says in John 20, 24, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. And he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. And there are many, many people, I'm sure we've all met many, many people, we have given them our testimony. We've said to them, Jesus changed my life. Jesus took hold of me and transformed me. He is alive. I have a relationship with him. I know him. I know God. And there are all, always those people who are like Thomas, who say, no, unless I have proof, I'm not going to risk anything. I'm not. I'm. I. I just imagine that pic, that moment. Perhaps we'll stop at this and we'll finish it tomorrow. Um, that moment when he's standing there with the other disciples and he sees their faces, and he hears them tell of how um, Jesus has come to them and he stood among them and he's and and he said peace. Be with you, and, and we saw him, and he spoke to us, and he's alive, and he came in through the locked door, and they tell him all that has happened, 
Um, and we've got the, the two that had been on the road have come back and said to them all that they've seen Jesus. And Thomas will have heard that story as well. And he would not believe. And there are those, uh, the, those we have talked to, those we've spoken to. And I've, I've often had it, you know, it's all right. You, you obviously are vulnerable and you need this kind of uh, spiritual prop. I don't need it. I cope all right on my own. Um, and I'm not going to actually follow Jesus unless I see for myself. Unless I have one of these visions that some people have, or unless God does something absolutely miraculous in my life. And praise God, sometimes he does. But actually, but actually, it's the testimony. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing to me how often people trust more the word of somebody they've never met, and they don't know anything about their character or the credentials or anything. And they will believe that word and that advice rather than believe the people they know and trust and who's, who they can have confidence in. And, you know, when we have confidence in each other and we trust each other, you know, um, we shouldn't follow every whim of doctrine and every, everything that's out there that says, oh, this is, the, this is the right way to do this or this is the right way to do that. No, we should trust the word first because Jesus is the truth. And anything that doesn't line up with the word, we should not trust. Anything that has come to us, no matter how well supported by miracles and signs and wonders, if it doesn't fit in with the word of God, it's a false prophecy. We have to be very careful. But when we know people, I mean, here Thomas was with his friends, these 10 other disciples, because of course Judas was not with them anymore. Um, so there were 11, including Thomas. So 10, and I'm sure the women were there as well, all telling him their experience of what had happened in that amazing, amazing day and seeing the transformation in their faces, the knowledge, the certainty. He, he'd lived and worked with these men for three and a half years. He knew them through and through. They were his best friends, his most trusted friends, but he could not accept their word but their word was true we'll, we'll talk more about Thomas tomorrow I hope I've set you off on a thinking thought um, my big puzzle of the day which is on my list of things I want to ask the Lord when I get to glory um, who was Thomas's twin and what happened to Thomas's twin was it a man or a woman um, were they was that it was was that twin a follower of Jesus not chosen as a disciple but a follower um, what what, what was, I want to know. <laughs> but let's think about Thomas some more tomorrow. Thought for the day is Thomas. Thank you, Thomas, for asking that question. Where are you going, Lord? We don't know the way. Show us the way. I once had the experience of a young man who was, who was very poorly and who was approaching death. And he said to me, show me the way through this. And I was able to say to him, there is only one way, and that is Jesus the way, the truth and the life. Jesus, I am the way. That's the way to go. See you tomorrow. Bye.